I'm uh, Stephen Chase. I'm the Director of People at uh, Thames Valley Police. I'm also President of the um, Police Forum nationally and I'm Chair of the Police Research Centre here at the Open University. I'd reached a stage in my career where I wanted to do, to do another piece of study and uh, I've always been interested in law and the impact of law at work and I was tempted to go back and do a first degree because I had a master's at the time and I saw the doctor advertised uh, and it sounded interesting and I went uh, to be interviewed and told them what I wanted to do and they said yes which I was quite surprised about bearing in mind it's not entirely business related. I wanted to do a deep discourse analysis of employment tribunal judgments um, on a particular theme around discrimination law and I was very clear from the outset that that's the area I wanted to look at. Um, as with most doctorates you hand down the, the actual piece of work and I, I picked up a piece of uh, discrimination law around um, burden of proof and standard of proof. I was still in full-time employment at uh, Thames Bay Police at that time and um, I just wanted to do the study. Family-wise it was a time when I thought I would be able to do it. I probably underestimated the time it would take. Uh, but it seemed right for me and it seemed right career-wise. And I had just had that thirst to, to, to learn some more. I mean I did it in Sheffield as well. So I was travelling up to Sheffield four or five times a year for three, four day blocks. Um, so there was the distance um, challenge, but actually I did find it quite helpful to detach myself from normal life and put myself in academia for three or four days. And uh, it worked out pretty well. And these days I think with, uh, with communications you can mo do most things by, by email. And our supervisory sessions were arranged collectively with three or four of us with the, the supervisor. So in the end I don't think that was a massive challenge and as I say I think the the fact that I could, I could go and spend my time totally immersed in it was helpful. The, the, the challenges question is a really interesting one, I think, because I, I think the first thing for me is, and, and I now supervise doctoral students, so I see it from the other side of the, the coin as well, and I think the first thing is you, you have to think really carefully about what you want to do and be really keen to do it. Because by the end of the process, you, you just want to sign off. And uh, to do something that you're really fascinated by is a real thing. So that's a challenge. I think the, the what, why and how questions are really important for supervisors to deal with, with with doctoral students up front. I think the what, most people have got a pretty good idea of what they want to do. Why they want to do it, particularly if they get into subjectivist research, I think is often more difficult and not thought through. And the how is probably the one that I encounter most, in the sense that people have really high ambitions but haven't really thought about how they're going to get the data, the material, the number of people they want to interview, uh, let alone think about the timing to, to, to write up. So I, th I think those are all challenges in themselves. From my perspective, as I've said, um, I was pretty clear about the, the what, although I did refine it as I, as I went through. The challenge for me was, was actually a positive challenge too though, because I became completely fascinated by philosophy. And despite spending quite a lot of time in, in academia, I've never done any philosophy. So I went down a lot of roads with dead ends, um, and that's always a challenge. But if you are a sort of person who enjoys the journey as much as the destination, they're quite useful challenges. But I would go from session to session thinking, yeah, I understand that bit, no, I don't anymore, yes, I do, no, I don't. So I think there's all that rereading and clear, and, and clear thinking challenge to come. From a, uh, from a, uh, the other thing I think people have got to think through is just how, the, is how they're going to work their time in, particularly if they've got domestic commitments, family commitments. I, I was lucky, as I said, with the ages of my children, but I, I worked pretty much every work weekend early in the morning because I'm an early, early riser. So I would do two or three hours on a Saturday and Sunday and I would take small blocks of leave to do the actual work. Because one of the other challenges I think is if you're doing it part time, you're not constantly in it. And some of the more difficult stuff, and I was doing some difficult stuff, um, you need a day or so to get your head back into the subject. So I think that's a real challenge for a part time student. Um, and probably the greatest one is, is maintaining that momentum particularly when it comes to writing anything. Um, depending on the doctorate, we had some um, set 
um, things we had to do, written pieces we had to do, which, which gave you a sort of target for some of those. But um, when you're doing a, a doctorate, the main part of the doctorate, you're pretty much on your own with, with, with the supervisor and if you're lucky, one or two colleagues who might not be doing the same subject, but they, they, they will be doing the same, the same journey. Um, I think what surprised me most was what it meant to me, what it does mean to me, um, because I, I hesitate to use the phrase life-changing, but I have no doubt that I have become a different person, a much deeper thinker since doing the doctorate than I, than I was before. And because I've stayed with academia since, I've done quite a lot of thinking and writing and talking about the issues around leadership and organisational development. So that, that was probably the bit that surprised me most. I didn't think I would come out to the other end that way. And in a very uh, almost humorous sense, it's almost impossible now to read something at face value, um, which in one way is great, and in another way uh, probably drives my colleagues crackers. I suppose what I was looking to do was to, to deepen my understanding about some of the employment law issues, particularly around discrimination law. But what I also wanted to do was to try and draw some parallels between the legal profession and my own profession in, uh, in human resources and look at some ideas that might make sense if they landed in both of those environments. Because increasingly I was seeing in my work that we work so closely with lawyers, lawyers work so closely with us around a whole range of things. And I think the style of operating for professionals in both of those professions has changed. So that was my ambition to try and come up with some ideas around that. And, and one example of that, I suppose, which, which came out of my research, was that we, we tend to have a situation in, in the UK and in many other countries where we have a, let's say, a dispute at work, which is basically a social breakdown. Um, and if it can't be resolved at work and we finish up in a tribunal, we then have a legal resolution to a social breakdown. And if those people go back to work, then surprise, surprise, that breakdown has not been resolved in any way, shape or form. And I think that's quite a difficult area to, to, to work with. And I th so I think the, the rise of mediation by lawyers, by ourselves and others, by ACAS, is a very um, interesting development. It certainly was at that time. It's more commonplace now uh, to see that happening, to try and prevent that legal solution to a social problem materialising. I think in terms of career, um, I think it's made me a better person. I've got no doubt about that. I'm, as, I, as I've said, I, I'm much more thoughtful about things now. I'm much calmer about things. Um, I, um, I recognise that there are not always um, very clear answers to some questions. And I think my role on the board has been very often to be the person who has the, but is there an alternative here? In, in policing, you won't be surprised to know that we have many characters who are, are looking to find a, a, a solution, and if possible, to find that solution fairly quickly. Um, and that's not unnatural um, in, in this profession. But actually, I think having the voice of someone, particularly with a little bit of personal maturity, to be able to say, actually, is there an alternative to this? Um, so I think it's helped me there. Um, so I think I'm a better board member for that. I've been told that by, by other people and I certainly feel much more comfortable doing that. Um, I, in terms of career aspirations, I think the greatest pleasure I've had in the last two or three years is, is to help others to think in that way. Um, and also with my links with academia and, and I'm sitting here today um, you know, on, that, on that ground really and, and I have a number of links with a number of universities where I'm trying to, to do that, not in a career earnings potential issue, but certainly in terms of a career enjoyment um, area. You know, if you're going to embark on a doctorate, I, I believe you, you need to think carefully about what, what, what you want to do and also what that journey might, might involve. So in terms of putting the proposal together, you do need to do some thinking about what you might see coming out of the research, um, what you might see the contribution to knowledge being, um, what sort of methodology you'd be thinking of using in terms of, of how you approach that. And, and also I think 
it, it's really important to have this um, understanding of how you're going to go about that research. In, in my own case, part of my contribution was to actually develop a model to, to look at the, the, uh, the information in a particular way as opposed to just taking something and looking at information. So I was, I was looking to make quite a, uh, a big leap, if you like, rather than an incremental leap, which a lot of research um, can be. But I think that clarity around that and, and consistency, if you, this comes later in research, but, but I think knowing where, what, what subject matter you're gonna use, i.e. the information you're gonna use, what methodology you're gonna use, what epistemology you're going to look through in terms of how you're gonna go about it, and what you're looking to achieve. If you can get that consistency, throughout then you're more likely to get a favorable reception on your application because for those of us that have been through the process and those of us that supervise it's very quick to see where there is a dysfunction there or a disjoint and those things I think do need thinking about so if you're going to come from a very positivist uh, point of view um, you're probably looking at certain types of methodology and similarly if you're doing what I was doing where I'm particularly interested in language and deep discourse analysis, then you're not looking at a, at a survey normally or a, a numbers-based uh, research project.